What's up, y'all? It's your boy C coming back at you with another episode of C's Retro and Garage. Coming to you from outer space in the free state of Florida. Here we are to do Tranny Fluid 101. Let's get to work. So as you guys are familiar with, my little 2014 Buick Encore, uh, this guy, you shouldn't be intimidated by him at all, it's pretty simple design. Uh, today we're going to do a little something that a lot of people are afraid to do, and it really shouldn't, so that's kind of why I do these little things, it's to demystify those things that are uh, considered by many to be difficult, and they shouldn't be. Uh, this is going to be a transmission fluid drain and fill. This is 101. If you remember from the last time when I did differential categories of class coursework 101, 102, 201, this is 101. Um, remember, drain and fill or transmission service 001 will always be paying somebody else to do it for you. Remember how I feel about that. I talked about it. And I don't like it. I understand some people that have to do it for that reason. This is going to be 101. Reason being, uh, I thought I had an easier way of doing the 101, which for those that might recall, using the machine, after seeing a schematic of this transmission of what it looks like inside, that's not going to be possible. Oh, that hose is not going to make it from one end all the way to the other. So, the next logical thing is to drain and fill. Now, do this according to your owner's manual. Um, I firmly believe in that. Um, with new cars, they are very bitchy, temperamental. Uh, they do love having their fluids changed and changed often. Especially nowadays when... The, new, the price of used cars is up 35%. It's absolutely insane. The price of new cars is up the same. You just can't get them. You better take care of what you got. So you better get used to doing this. Um, and, you know, this this is considers the step. Now, doing this the hard way, 301, is a no-no. There's only one time you're ever going to do 301, and that's when you are replacing an engine. Uh, whoever the brilliant engineers were when they designed these transmissions, the filter's actually on the very top of the case. In order to get to it, goddamn bugs, in order to get to it, you got to remove the engine or drop the tranny. That's not going to happen. Forget it. I personally am one of those proponents. I don't or I should say opponents actually, I'm a proponent to not do, or opponent, opponent of doing transmission flushes. Um, I wouldn't recommend them. I, I don't believe in them. I think it's just a, a way to, uh, for these places like the service centers to, you know, do the shit that you could do yourself for $20 um, and actually make your transmission worse once they, once they flush a lot of the crud out from other places and goes into places that didn't have crud before and now your car feels like absolute shit and another flush might just ruin it might, might pin shit off uh, so um i'm gonna go over some of the basics on this one it's not that difficult you don't need a lot of tools you can do this with basic tools you can take us take it a step further which i'm gonna do i'll show you how in just a moment Now the only tools you're really going to need, get yourself some funnels, a long funnel, any long funnel. The short funnels will come in handy for a reason, you got your pan. Um, you can really do this a little bit more advanced if you have one of the fancy drain pans that has the actual notches that lets you measure how, how much fluid you're, you're actually draining, because it's called a drain and fill for a reason. 
you look at the owner's manual, uh, a full tranny is about 10 quarts. The drain and fill is going to be a little bit over 4, about 4.2 quarts. Um, my advice, put in what you take out. Yes, you can be more precise by checking the fluid level. That much is true. But if that fluid level when you drain is about that 4 quart, 4.2, personally, I don't think there's any reason to bother to check it. Now, in this car, it uses Dexcron 3 automatic, uh, excuse me, Dexcron 6 automatic transmission fluid. This one happens to be full synthetic. Keep this bottle, you're gonna need it. I'm gonna show you the wire. You already know there's are four quarts. Because this is what we're gonna do. In order to know the full amount, we need a little bit of help. Grab yourself a gallon container. Remember, a gallon is four quarts. Wash this out real good. Get your little funnels. One of these little funnels, okay? Pop it in here. Pour your, your fresh tranny fluid into here, mark it of where that fluid level is, and then reuse the empty container to pour the old fluid in here so you know exactly how much you took out. That's it. You can do this with basic socket wrenches. You will need a torque wrench, and it's a, the, I did the math for you on this one. The drain plug torques to about eight to nine foot pounds of torque the owner's manual specifies inch pounds uh, so doing the math I think it was like a hundred and eight so you can figure that one out yourself pretty much it's about eight to nine foot pounds of torque you know I like to round up to the next ten we'll do ten so it's a very easy torque and there's one extra little tool I like to use temperature gauge you want to warm it up make sure it's warm Make sure it's at about 180 is where the fluid is supposed to be at its most viscous, 180 to 200 degrees. That's where it should operate. Drain, get the hell out of there. Let this thing, you know, do its, let it do its thing patiently. Come back, plug it. Now, with these trannies, there is a check plug. Uh, I'll show you where it is in a moment once I get under the car. There's the drain plug and the check plug. Uh, but first things first, let's let's transfer our fluid here. I don't need to take a video of that. You, sh you should be able to figure that out on your own. All right, here's the tranny crankcase. Let's let's go ahead and hit that hit the, the bottom of it there. As you can see, that fluid is running pretty cold. Okay, the car was off for a while. Now, technically, it should be warmed up. You want to warm it up to that temperature. I'm seeing some really nasty shit under here. Um, I can't tell what the hell it is. It looks pretty fucking slimy. Um, it's kind of gross, actually. It does not appear to be any type of fluid. Maybe I hit something, ran over something, and it splashed. And it almost looks like some kind of like cooking fat. If you ask me, it looks like lard. Um, but if you were to look here, this is the, should be, the check plug. Let me see if I can get the light on. Okay. Should be the check plug right there. Okay. That should be the check plug. And that over there is the dream plug. Now, of course, they had good intentions when they put this here. Um, but... Boy, you can kind of tell that it, you know what's going to happen if you were to... I can make the in, the intent, obviously, with the little baby funnel so that this squirts straight down there. But gravity being what it is, that's a lot of fluid and it's going to overwhelm this and it's just going to get all over this pan and it's going to... The protective shield and etc. Um, so, to be honest with you, the best thing to do is remove it. You can see the screws here. They're just like 10 millimeter screws. 
go ahead and remove this pan here so you can get the unobstructed access to it and uh, then go from there. I'm not exactly sure what that fluid is. That could have just been a little bit of radiator fluid that cooked. Uh, that when I put in a little fluid, I spilled a little bit. Which, you know, it happens. Uh, this The new stuff takes can wait a while. Um, this shit, I don't know what the hell this is in there. It's kind of gross, actually. Pretty disgusting. Um, might be a good time to clean it off. It doesn't give me any type of fluid smell, like any type of, of automotive fluid smell. Um, so... Uh, you know, we'll kind of go from there. I'll double check to make sure if that's the, the actual check plug. Um, I believe it is this one. It, it may not be. I'll have to take a look again in the manual and double check. That is for sure the drain plug. Um, uh, but I'll go ahead and, and get a better look. But first things first, let's get this part off. You know, so you can, you can work the right way. All right, guys, and FYI, you will also need, at this spot and that spot over there, you will need a T15 socket, T15 star socket. Uh, the fronts come off with 10s, and the other backs, as you can see, those come off, those are the, the pry-off kind. Um, so that's just a mental note. Uh, and now, let's uh, go ahead and get this out of the way or clean it. I honestly can't tell what this shit is underneath. It looks gross as hell. Looks like a splash of some kind. Um, as you can see, there's not a whole heck of a lot under the, uh, on the underside of it. Um, maybe, who knows, some kind of road debris, some really gross shit. Um, but maybe, I, maybe I hit something and that's its decomposition somewhere and I'll find it at some point. Um, but uh, that's it. Now let's uh, get under the train. Yeah, as you can see, here's the kind of the splash pattern went across this way. Um, I'm looking at it. This is the oil pan, by the way, in case you weren't aware. Um, but you see, like, it's like a white crease. It's really gross. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but it, you know, pretty much stayed away from everything under here, except for the, the spots that were exposed. The parts of the case that were exposed. Um, I'm thinking this was something. I'm not sure what I might have hit. <laughs> but um, yeah, now it's going to be time to drain. All right, so now it's time to drain. And my phone just fell. That's okay. I stand it up. It is as simple as just unscrewing it and letting it go. Okay, with this one, I've already tested the temperature on it. It's okay if you drop the uh, hold on a second. wrong way. Right. All you're doing, you know me, I like to let this kind of go slowly. I don't like to rush it on out. Remember, this fluid is hot. Uh, a little bit closer here. Mm. You see the plug? So I'm going to pull the plug out. So you can see it right there. It's hard to see on the cardboard. Um, the fluid itself still has a little bit of red to it. I don't know how well you can see it on my finger. I'm trying to get a little contrast here. Can you see it? It's, it's not horrible. Um, I've never changed the fluid on this car. When I bought it, it was a little over 70,000 miles, now it has 95,000 miles. Um, so, it is time to, to do this type of service uh, for the car. Just let it drain, and then we'll go ahead and measure. 
So at this point, right now, unless you're very paranoid that this thing is going to piss all 9, 10 quarts, which I seriously doubt it will, uh, you just go ahead and you let it drain. Uh, you know, catch up on your uh, on your smoke break if you uh, can, because uh, remember, uh, smoke um, <clears throat> puffing uh, saves lives, and uh, puffing also rejects the snake venom. So, at this point is where I would say puff if you got them. And I'm gonna let this go ahead and drain and come back to tighten it up. All right, we got our plug back in. Give me a second here. Ugh. Tighten by hand, okay? Grab your torque wrench. This is set to 10 pounds, of, 10 foot pounds of torque. And you get the idea. I'm waiting for the click. And almost there, but you get the idea. Once you hear that click, you know you're there. It's just kind of hard doing it. With one hand. Alright. That was the click I was waiting for. And now we just put everything back together and pull our fluid out. Alright, have a look here. This is the old fluid. Okay. Rounds level. You see right there at three quarts. There's the fourth, we're hitting, and they get to the very top here. Look inside, it's pretty black. That's the 4.2 quarts of the drain and fill. So now, you see, you see what that is? I took a crowbar, moved this intake hose back, and you can see the plug is right, the fill cap is right there. So using your long funnel, put that fresh fluid in there, and you should be all set for now. I'm not sure how well you can see the difference, but this is new fluid here compared to the old fluid there. It's kind of black, so it's, it's pretty shitty. Okay, so here you got your funnel. Let this thing go. Okay. Here's the little cap. You put your little cap back, as you can see. That's your tranny fluid. Once this is done, let it peacefully go. Then you go ahead, put your cap back on, take your crowbar off. Everything is back together. And then, final step. All right, once you start the car, I'm just gonna put it back. It's a little bit of a broken rule here, but that's okay. So, start your car, okay, and you want to let it go through the gears for a little bit. You don't need to rev it, just about 30 seconds to a minute in between the gears. You want to get that fluid in there, the new stuff. And that's pretty much all you're really going to do. Uh, you just want to go through those gears, make sure that it gets that good crispy cream, cream. <laughs> see where my brain is, crispy, clean fluid in there. It's already been sitting in park. And then if you want to go the extra step, one last thing. All right, so the last step is you're under the car. Now to test, the last thing, if you look there at the pipe, exhaust pipe,
See how hot that is? Okay, if I get a little bit closer, you can see the temperature. That is the transmission right there. You can just hit the case right there. You see it's about one, 146 and the max is 191.8. You never want that thing to go over 200. That could show uh, up as a sign of something bad. But uh, once you do that, you know your temperature's right there. That's the max. It's current reading right there is at one, 152, 151, 152, 9. It's kind of hanging in there. Um, it's running colder than the norm. The colder part is an anomaly, but it's actually a good one. Uh, that is you know what the what the case itself is reading which tells you that you know the fluid is going to be a little bit warmer than that um other than that that's pretty much it and you're good to go and that's all you basically have to do just take your time with it make sure you you're calm you do it right you don't want to screw this up remember put in what you take out always keep that in mind and that's it you do that at the interval that it tells you to do in the service manual and that should guarantee your transmission is going to have a long and healthy life that's all there is to it and uh, as always this is your boy C saying thank you for checking out this episode of C's Retro Garage reminding you as always stay safe be ye kind one to another peace out and I'll catch you on the next one